Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our alumni webinar on the topic of a critical look at alternative sources of income and personal finance, an exposition to the cash flow. Um, our today's webinar is organized by the DAAD Information Center, ACRA, and our director, uh, Berit Stopper. My name is Sarah Miebach and I'll be the moderator of today's webinar. I'm more than happy to also welcome Dr. Kuku Sumanu, who is our resource person for today's webinar topic. Um, Dr. Dikraft is a senior lecturer at the Department of Building Technology at Penn University. And he has done a lot of research within the field of business and management, um, including corporate strategy, entrepreneurship, personal finance, and management. And in addition to this, he is also a coordinator of the International Journal of Project Planning and Finance, which specializes in project management and financial management. So he has a lot of um, experiences within the field of personal financial management and uh, we will to listen to his um, presentation later. So um, for all the participants who are joining us online, uh, this webinar is online at the following. So I will start with a very short presentation on our DAAD support opportunity for us. And after my presentation, I will give the word to Dr. Dikraft to begin the presentation on critical look at alternative sources of income and personal development in exposition to the cash flow contract. And after his presentation, we will have a discussion. So if you have any questions or comments, please make um, to the discussion session. We can use um, our hand signal tool which you can read on the webinar, and, uh, or you can type in a question. Um, if you want to ask a question, please, um, at the beginning, introduce yourself shortly, like where you're from, what you are doing, and then um, you can ask a question. Um, and then in the end, I will close our today's webinar. So the DAAD support opportunity for alumni. How does my presentation look like? I will start with uh, the al different alumni clubs. Then I will talk a little bit about, about the organization for foreign alumni. And these include the scientific program, the invitation program for former scholars, alumni special projects, alumni service area, and the alumni community online. And after this, I will also talk a little bit about, about the advantages which will former um, DAAD um, scholarship holders who have, um, who have done their studies in Germany and now back in their home country. So, uh, can you hold on a second? Die Stummschaltung ist aufgehoben. The DAD um, aims to sustain and support the educational effect which are achieved through different uh, club activities. So you can join alumni clubs or even um, create alumni clubs to connect with other DAD alumni and to keep um, up to date with the developments. In Furthermore, um, the DAAD aims to recruit high-performing foreign students um, for German universities and higher education institutions, and they advise and support German students The alumni clubs, furthermore, aim to um, secure the assistance and support with other scholarships and grant funding. 
So um, overall, they are supposed to uh, let you connect to other DAD alumni and to let you know about um, um, about events and uh, the development. You can be very up to date when you are joining the club. And uh, the alumni calendar, where I'm pointing to, um, uh, there you can experience uh, more information about like the latest events um, in general for alumni, but also these including the alumni clubs. And for more information, you can click on the link where I'm pointing to at the moment. In addition to the alumni clubs, we have other funding programs for foreign alumni. Um, alumni, or in general, people are supposed to be connected and to, um, and to join network opportunities. And um, the different funding programs um, are, yeah. are supposed to do no, all connections. So we have, for example, the scientific literature program. This refers especially to former one-year scholarship holders in all disciplines from the European as well as from the Northeastern and Eastern Europe countries. And within this program, you can apply for specialist This will help you with more academic knowledge and qualification. And you can apply for this one year. Um, under this link, you can find more detailed information. Then we have our reputation program for former scholarship holders. Um, this is especially addressed to scholarship holders of the development-related postgraduate programs. Um, so after um, you've done your studies and um, you've been employed in your home countries for at least three years, you can apply for this program, um, where you can do a study visit in Germany. So you can uh, conduct research or you can even take up employment in Germany up to three months. Um, to make contacts, to stay connected, and to um, uh, to advance your knowledge. Um, also, within this link, you can find more information. Then we have our alumni special projects. Um, this refers especially to executives and scientists from developing countries who have studied or researched in Germany. And, um, there you can apply for a one-week seminar, which will be held in, um, held in Germany or at a German university, where you can update your knowledge and experience um, more, more information in your uh, research field. Um, within this link, you can find the detailed information. For our one-year scholarship holders from developing countries and from the countries of Southeastern and Eastern Europe, you can also benefit from a small equipment program. Um, especially the scholarship holders within the fields of engineering, technology and science, and agricultural and forestry science can apply for different grants um, where with, with which they can purchase small equipment and materials, which they can then use for their studies and research. So please have a look at the following two links if you are interested. And um, within the networking idea, you can also join our alumni community online. So the Alumni Portal Deutschland provides you the opportunity to stay connected, to stay connected with other Indian PAD scholarship holders, but also with PAD scholarship holders from the whole world. So you can make contacts there, you can make contacts with organizations, universities and companies. And under this link you can register um, for the Alumni Portal Deutschland. And you can also join the Alumni Service Area and there you will benefit from interesting offers and more information uh, within the um, alumni community. And my last point refers to the advantages of um, who are coming back after their studies in Germany. So um, to the Center for International Migration Developments you can apply for financial support and um, you can apply for this returning program 
um, before you're returning. So you can um, apply before you're coming back to Ghana or your home countries. But even if you are back, you can um, you can email them and ask if you can still apply. Then you can also find the alumni community in Ghana, the DAAP alumni network. And you can apply for integration packages for return experts. This includes, for example, top-up salaries for experts in development-related workplace, uh, in development-related um, files, and the workplace equipment. So with this, I am finished my presentation on the DAAD alumni opportunities. Thank you very much for your attention. And now I give the word to our research person, Dr. Dickraft. I'm very happy to have you here today. And he will now, and he will now talk about um, the critical look at alternative sources of income and personal finance in exposition to the cash flow. Thank you very much, Sarah, for a uh, wonderful presentation. And thank you also for the opportunity to uh, share my experiences with your uh, with, with your alumni. And before I start, I want to thank God for giving us this opportunity to meet on this platform. I want to briefly introduce myself, as Sarah has done, and, and move straight to today's discussion. Uh, as you are aware, I'm Degart. Also, when my friends call me Digi, and uh, in 2003 I finished my first degree, and in 2008 my PhD. I joined the university uh, in 2009, and currently I'm a senior lecturer and a businessman, a consultant. I run uh, three companies, and uh, in, in in consultancy training and publications. So you can judge. Uh, 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 for yourself, there are multiple streams of income, and currently, by the grace of God, I'm working on a hotel project, Emerald Prestige, which uh, later uh, 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 some of you, when you happen to be in Kumasi, uh, I, I can give you free accommodation. Uh, all my life, what I've been doing is trying to uh, lift people up by inspiring them to their dreams. That has been my ambition. And coming from uh, like a typical Ghanaian, coming from uh, a relatively poor home, uh, you can see that I've tasted poverty. And and if I'm sharing with you the need to manage your finances and also the need to, to, to also uh, uh, look for alternative source of income so that you can be financially secured and free, uh, uh, you understand and, uh, and appreciate. You know, we are in the age of knowledge economy, and uh, that's why many opportunities are given to all of us to experience our master's degree and PhD degrees elsewhere. And uh, in doing so, we, we are aiming at uh, having uh, uh, becoming prosperous. That's prosperity, security, and social well-being. And I believe each one of us, which is on this platform today, uh, 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 has that uh, uh, edge to become uh, prosperous and to become secured and to have that social well-being. And to be able to do that, we need to take note of this. We don't have time on our side. So every moment counts, every minute counts. And whatever we are doing today, we need to make sure that uh, 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 we don't waste the time. And uh, by what the information I received from Sarah, uh, I, I know most of us are between the ages of 25 to 55 years, and this is the years that we are, we are supposed to achieve. By this time, we should be completing our various education. So we, 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 and, and uh, this question that is being posed here. What do you want to become or be when you grow up? I think it's a question 
that when we were little, our uh, parents asked us or our friends asked us. And as we are growing up, we keep on changing what we want to become. Uh, many of us, when we were little, when we were asked what we want to become, we said we want to become doctors. Why? Because uh, doctors are known to live honorable life, a, well, a decent life, and their lifestyle were inspiring to many. So people uh, begin to say that, oh, when I go, I'll become engineer, I'll become this, I'll, I'll, I'll become that, because of the decent lifestyle that they, they, they live. And that decent lifestyle is manifested in their financial status. So financial status is very important in, 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 in answering this question. Now, if you want, uh, uh, this question is being answered by these young, two young people. One said, I want to become an employee. One said, I want to become an employer. Whichever angle you look at it from, there is certainly uh, some inflow, some income that the individual will, will receive. And depending upon where you are coming from, Somebody may be doing very well, like the young girl up there, who uh, uh, seems to have an, an, an edge, and her aim is to become an employee in a big organization or an employer herself, and by so doing, rising up uh, 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 on the financial ladder. Another guy who may also come from a relatively poor background uh, may, may have suffered uh, some uh, 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 difficulties. But notwithstanding, his target is also also aiming high, rising to 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 the top in terms of uh, uh, finances. Now, both uh, children are asked this question, what do you want to become when you, you grow up? Now, the vision, they, they, they may have different Missions, probably as we are all uh, scattered abroad, and your vision is that you want to become a world-class leading professional and achieve financial freedom in a globalized economy. Is that the vision that you have, or you have another uh, uh, version of this vision? Whatever vision you have, uh, uh, you have. The at the end of the day, after finishing your masters, mm -hmm. after finishing your PhD. You want to come back to be financially handicapped? No, that I don't think that is what we are yearning for. If that's the case, there will, there will be no need for uh, uh, schooling. Right, so this is the vision probably we have set for ourselves, financial freedom in a globalized economy. To be able to achieve this vision, that's what we call the connected capital. We will not talk about the first three, but to this lesson, we want to look at the, 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 the last capital. But as uh, I walk through, we want to look at what we call psychological capital, the human capital, and then the social capital. Whatever you want to become tomorrow in terms of your financial status, you need this uh, uh, capital to, to, to reach to your financial goals. And to be able to do that, you certainly need what we call other people's money and other people's time. Your knowledge also about the other people's money and other people's time and the cash flow quadrant will determine who you will become or who you will be financially. Either you become poor, rich or wealthy. In fact, uh, as for poverty, I will not recommend poverty for anybody because poverty in itself is a disease. Right? When it affects you, 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 everything goes bad, and uh, uh, even the good book uh, in the Bible even says that uh, I wish above all things that you may prosper, even as you so prosperous. So I wouldn't wish poverty for for anybody, but you see, uh, it's not a choice too. Some people can decide to remain poor, right? You can decide to remain poor if you want to be poor. But uh, 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 whether you have a education or not, you can decide to remain poor. And also, you can decide to be rich, and you can decide to be wealthy. 
So let me ask the question, where do you want to remain? If you remain, if you want to be rich then or wealthy, then you need to know you have you need to have knowledge about the cash flow curve, which was first introduced by Robert Kiyosaki. And if you have opportunity to look for his books, right, then I'm sure uh, uh, you will find a lot of information that will guide you after this presentation. And I will recommend that after this presentation, you look for his books, uh, in particular the the Ray that for that book, and then the the cash flow quadrant and all that. Right. Now let me move straight to discuss with you what. Uh, 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 how to earn income from multiple streams. The basis is that you have education and you have power to earn income. In the past, even people who, who didn't have education were able to make income. Now, you have opportunity to have your master's, to have your PhD, right? So that, that gives us the basis to earn income. Now, many of us, uh, as tradition, as we are growing up, we are told that go to school, and acquire knowledge, get good grace, and secure uh, a good job. So we, 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 when we were in the university, uh, me in particular, I was thinking that when I finish school, I'll just get a job somewhere. And that is how many... Hello? And, and that's how many of us also think. So if you look at the cash flow quadrant, it consists of the the E, the S, the B, and then the I quadrant. You see, the E quadrant is what where many of us find ourselves. And in fact, research has shown that in every uh, nation, about 90% of the population fall within the E quadrant. You, at the E quadrant, there are some characteristics. That means that you have a job. You finish school, PhD, MSc, MPhil, then you apply for a job and somebody employs you and then you are put on a, a, a monthly paycheck, a, a pay list. So every month you go in for your, your paycheck. That is good. It gives you some, uh, some uh, security. You are sure that every month you receive uh, this salary, this amount of salary. And in, in this uh, a quadrant, you also work for people. The job you are doing, the, the business belongs to somebody. So you are working for somebody. Which you use your, your energy, your effort, your, everything, your, your emotion to work for that person. And then also you work for money. Uh, this quadrant is tedious. It, it, it's difficult, it's tedious, it's time consuming. And most of the times, the, the financial rewards are, are, are not uh, 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 rewarding so much, right? And then we have the S quadrant down the 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 E, where like a medical doctor, like a lawyer, who offers a, a freelance consultancy once a while, right? So that one you work for yourself, you you. There are, there, are, there are some advantages and disadvantages in each quadrant. So let's say I am a lecturer here at Cairn University, a senior lecturer. So that I belong to the E. And I also uh, have do a freelance consultancy uh, in certain areas of my discipline. For instance, I am a curriculum developer. So in my free time, I develop programs, academic programs for certain universities. And they, and, they, and they pay me, right? At a point in time, I, I speak as a motivational speaker to many uh, 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 organizations, and they invite me and they, and they pay me. So I earn extra income from 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 the S, that's freelance professional. So you, I don't know the programs you are studying. Uh, those who are studying. Uh, uh, program A, B, C, D, or E, right? You can also replicate or do a freelance consulting or a, a job along your professional line 
and also be engaged in somebody's firm, right, as an employee. When you come to the B, that is, uh, that the B column is where the big things are done. And if the column is a quadrant where it's very difficult to operate. In fact, uh, the B suggests that you have to set up a business system that runs and you employ people conventionally to work for you, right? So you are now the employer and then you employ people and the people work for you, right? And then the, the I is also what we call the investment. At the end of the day, when you have some money, you, you can invest in, uh, in, in bonds, you can invest in uh, assets, fixed assets like hotels, right? Hostels, you can invest in, in, in uh, some activities that you are not directly involved in day-to-day -day administration of it, right? I mean, you, you put your money at work and your money will work for you, right? So, if you look at this quadrant, as somebody who is pursuing a PhD or MSc and coming out uh, to the job market, I'm sure if I ask you, where do you want to place your, your your yourself. Uh, some most of you, if I want to take a survey, most of you will say, "Oh, uh, let's go for for E because the E is easy. You can easily get job there." But even now, the E is not easy to 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 get place, right? So uh, the question is, the next thing is. Right. The, the next thing is that if you want to be rich, poor, or wealthy, then you should know where to place yourself. In fact, if you want to look at the difference between the, 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 the rich and everyone else, the rich people, they receive less than 30% of their income from, from the year. And uh, about 70% of their income from the I, from the investment. Later, we'll come back to explain this dynamics. And then, if we want to look at uh, the poor and the rich, uh, mostly the poor, 80% of our income are coming from what? The E. And then, less than 20% coming from, from the I. So, uh, but the, the, the good news is that you you can move, you can move. You, you it's not a, a rule that you are stuck to one quadrant. God has given us the ability to combine one or two or three or all the four quadrants. In fact, at the moment I am operating in the three in in in, in three E S and B. I am yet to move into the I by the grace of God. That's why uh, for the past one year or so I've invested close to 1 million Ghana cities into uh, building a hotel uh, in Kumasi here, right? And that, when that hotel is built, it is given out for someone to manage it without my day-to-day my -day engagement. And that will generate substantial income uh, 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 in, in the eye, right? And as I mentioned earlier also, uh, if you look at the U column, I, as I operate there uh, at Ken as a, a lecturer, right? And then uh, I, every month, I don't have to uh, 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 struggle. By the time I open my bank, my, list, uh, my, my salary is already there, and I'll be smiling, right? But that money that I receive is very much, it's very small compared to the, uh, the monies I receive from the S and then the B. Uh, in the B, I mentioned earlier in my in my introduction that I run a business, a top technocrats, which is a project management consulting firm and uh, an uh, institute, training innovations and technology transfer institute, which also I have employees there that work for me, and I pay myself there at the B, right? 
sometimes the, the monies I generate from the B right are used to invest in the I right which which is also improving my uh, uh, your my financial status every day uh, uh, uh. now so where are you now we are all students and we are finishing right I will encourage everybody that even though as we come back we should we should be able to a combined uh, one or two or three or four quadrants so that we can make progress in our in our finances. In fact, the movement is that you can move. Either. Christ or and Christ. The difficulty is that moving from Christ is difficult, right? Because starting a business, there's so much risk involved of their own. I'm able to start a for 10 years of license, we progress every now and then. So I would encourage that as you finish your programs and you come back and joining the workforce, as some of you who go for the E, some also should also look at the B, right? And then also you move anti-clockwise to uh, the S if you, are, if you are at the E. You should be able to see how you can combine, you can get income from the E and also supplement it with uh, income from the, the S. Uh, moving the anti-clockwise way is relatively easier than moving the clockwise way. Now, if you want to remain at the, at the, at the E, right, now sometimes your income is low, you are known as low income group or middle class, uh, and there are various uh, categories. Of, of, of the middle class, we have various cat categories of the poor, we have various categories of the low income groups, right? And those who are able to combine uh, the, the, the EMS, we, we normally we are the middle class, like myself, right? And the middle class too, we have the upper, middle and lower, right? So uh, I, I believe that you, you have the ability to become whatever you want to become if you are desirous enough and determined to to, to become right so uh, the, the whole concept of the cash flow quadrant is that you, sh you shouldn't be static in, in, in any income money can come from various angles but you need to identify those opportunities and, and, and make good use of it, right? And then also, if you look at the, the B, of course, if we are running a business, if I'm the CEO of Barclays Bank, the owner of Barclays Bank, right, and I'm paying my managing director this much, how much do you think will be my, my pay? Certainly, the MDC pay will not be more than the, the, the pay of the, of the owner of the business. Uh, uh, come to think of it, I don't know the when profit is declared and uh, dividends are shared, right? You also receive a strong portion of your dividend as a business owner, right? And the moment you enter into the I column, right, then you you are uh, moving into the very high income group or the wealthy class, right? The the the, the, the wealthy class. So we say two is better than one. I, I believe uh, all of us have the ability to to um, uh, uh, combine one or two or three or four. And even as you grow up to a very high status, and as you are uh, 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 you are known, you you become known to people. 
then the people will, be, will begin to even invite you on certain com committees and boards, right? That could also serve you additional income, right? Apart from earning the income from the E, the S, the B, and the I, right? You can also uh, 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 improve by being known and being called upon certain uh, national and international boards and, and councils where probably every year you meet once or twice a year and your per diem alone is enough to, to, to cater for you for a long time. Right. So, uh, friends, I want to throw this challenge to you. Uh, we, we, we shouldn't remain where we are financially because if you want to remain at a particular quadrant, one quadrant, it will not help you. It will not help me. So we should be able to uh, 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 get authentic source of income from uh, various sources. Now, your movement will also determine what your financial status, whether job security, financial security, or financial freedom. So which one do you want? Do you want job security, financial security, or financial freedom. I will choose financial freedom because that will send me to the path of uh, wealth, prosperity, right? And we'll ask one that, uh, and once that is achieved, you are sure of making maximum impact. The reason why you are brought to existence is not good enough when you are able to cater for yourself and your family alone. Right, like uh, that, for instance, uh, is an organization reaching out to help people. After you have also finished your various degrees, you must also go out there and reach out to the people. But it is impossible when you don't have the means to reach out. That is why there's the need for everyone to be financially free so that you can reach out to the very vulnerable and the poor who didn't have this enormous opportunities that are open to us. So, our, and, and to be able to be, be financially free, you don't have to remain in the E. The E only provides access to job security. Job security, you are okay, you are satisfied with what you have, right? But uh, uh, it is not enough to remain there. And even at the job security, at the new quadrant, where many of us may find ourselves, right? It is not safe to remain there. It's not. It's never safe to remain there, because I'm there myself, and I know what happens there. At the at the job security, at the new quadrant, right? So with your education, with the support from that that you are enjoying, you come back and make sure you, you are able to operate, combine the, 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 all the four quadrants and, and make yourself proud financially and make everyone around you also proud. So I have chosen to go for financial freedom. That's why every day, every, every now and then, I'm looking out for alternative means of uh, adding uh, value to my pocket. Now, let's look at how we can leverage here. Uh, for instance, you have a job, your, your main job is a lecturer, right? You can do consultancy after your PhD. You can do research. Uh, recently, we did a research uh, uh, for a certain company, right? We just submitted the report. It took us like four months to do that survey. And I've gone for my, 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 my cash. If you want to know the details of the car, you see that my two or five years lectureship pay can, cannot match the, amount, the kind of money these guys have paid me for the past four months. Right. So you, 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 you shouldn't sit down. Right. You look at training. You can also look at supplies. Right. You can look at uh, uh, part-time teaching, like people call it 
look home, right? You can also write books, right? You, you can write books because uh, you can write books and sell. How many of us are writing, right? So if you want to increase your your <coughs> the the value of your pocket, then all these are potential avenues, alternative jobs, alternative uh, 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 source of income that that you you, you can uh, add to yourself. You you can also uh, do set up a business like I mentioned. You can serve on committees. You can do uh, NGO set up an NGO, right? And other thing, any other extra activity that can bring you uh, uh, income or extra money. In fact, the 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 art of greatness is learned from school. If you train ourselves to be great, so that you can also train others to, to be giant. So if you train yourself to be great financially, right, then you can also train others to, to be great. Uh, my closing advice is that let us develop the, the mindset of being an entrepreneur. Let us develop that mindset in the past, they said money is evil, but money is never evil. Uh, even the good book, the Bible says money answers all things, right? So let us increase our 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 our, our uh, uh, financial relevance by engaging in multiple streams of activities that can enhance our 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 income. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Hello. Hello. Thank you very yes, much sir. for this yes, interesting uh, presentation. Um, we are now opening our discussion round. So thank if you. any of you have some questions or comments on uh, Dr. Degraft's presentation on the DID alumni support, please feel free to ask. So you can use the um, the hand signal tool if you have a question and then um, I can turn on your microphone so that you can ask the question. Thank you. Okay. So there's one question from... Uh, Oh, more okay. I just turned on the microphone of Baba Adam. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Maybe you can just uh, All right. introduce yourself shortly and then um, ask your question. Okay. So my name is Baba Adam. Um, I am. I, I was in Germany. I studied in Germany for in Stuttgart in University of Hohenheim. Uh, but not with the AAD scholarship, but on, on my own, and I'm in Ghana now, and I'm working with GIZ um, in Ghana. <clears throat> so I think that thank you very much, uh, Dr. De Graaf, for the wonderful presentation. I, I enjoyed it very much. My question, however, is that um, for you to move, for instance, and I, I admit that I find myself in the E quadrant, but for you to move uh, to, for instance, even B and S or even I, you need some sort of funding. And so probably if you can also give an idea of, I mean, where to really get funding because without funding you cannot go on with all these uh, movements. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adams. Uh, uh, in fact, with the G, most of us are at the E. Moving from the E to the to the uh, S, actually we don't need money. All what we need is your social capital, right? For somebody to connect you to a certain consultancy job somewhere, right? Because the 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 the, the S is just applying the knowledge you have acquired in your education as a professional, right? So it's more the S is more of a freelance service, right? Based on your profession, and the issue regarding the 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 B, if you are the S, the the G, and you want to move to the to the B, 
You know, many many people attribute uh, the inability to set up a business to lack of funding. That one is is a well established uh, uh, is a well established tradition. Like, why are you why are you not starting your business? It's a lack of funding. You see, you may be operating at the E with GIZ, okay? You are operating at uh, at the E with GIZ, and you want to set up a business. So you can start saving towards setting up that business. Or there are other alternative sources of income uh, 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 money. That's why I was talking about other people's money, <coughs> OPM, where you can assess finance from uh, external sources. And that one too is sometimes very difficult because the banks are unwilling to give out loans to uh, startups, right? But if you really want to do a business, right, uh, 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 set up a business while operating at the E, then the best way is to start saving towards that or explore external source of funding. And uh, doing so, there are several ways you can what, look at it from, which probably the time may not allow us to go into details. But later I can share with you through some, some uh, information about how to assess a standard source of finance when you are at the E and want to move to the to the B. Right. But I, I can assure you that if you want to move to the B, it doesn't really, really require huge source of money anywhere, right? I, for instance, uh, let me share with you my experience when I, I wanted to, to move into the B. I use what we call angel financing, right? Angel, where my, my, my cousin who had a lot of money and didn't know how to use it. So I went to him and told him that this is my business. If you can take 30% uh, of their business and give me this amount of money, to run the business, right? Then and then the guy just bought into the higher into the uh, into the business, right? And it helped me establish my first company way back in 2004, right? And over the years, it has been growing and been growing, right? So uh, it is not easy, but if you try, you you certainly get there, right? You certainly. Yeah, there. Thank you. All right, Adams. Okay, thank you. Oh, Sarah? Yeah, um, thank you very much for your question. So we have two more questions. Uh, one is from Samuel. I just turn on your microphone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me too? Perfect. Okay, you can. <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Samuel. Hello, sir. Hello, okay, Samuel. Okay. I can yeah, hear um, you. Yeah. I'm a first, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm a first graduate from the university. Um, I did my MPhil in economics. And um, um, currently, I've started three three businesses on my own, but it seems to go down any time we start. Um, the first one is a consultancy, like you talked about. I've, I've, not, I've not worked before. I've not started anything before, but as a student, I started doing my own thing. Uh, we came together as graduate students to form a consultancy, but it looks as if it's hanging because of finances or something. But and then the next one is uh, I tried also entering into a break, and uh, we I went for a training and all that, but because of income and all that, you know, they say it's it's, it's the problem of uh, as graduate students since we say we don't have jobs, we don't go into entrepreneurship, but we try it and. The hard work is we go in then we, we feel somehow. Okay. So um, when I go back home also, I started an NGO myself. It's a youth developmental something whereby the youth in the community come together to to, to help the community. We've, we've done two projects so far, and um, the project we've we've cleaned. Uh, we, we we are into sanitation. We've gone to clean some places and all that. But so. This, this are some of the challenges that the youth we face. Um, currently, I'm not working, as I said, but I'm trying to do something to help our community, which seems to be hanging and we are losing our track as we do it. So any help that you could offer me could help me very much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
Samuel, thank you for uh, your question. And in fact, I, I admire your yeah, ambition. Mm -hmm. And then it's good you started something. And uh, the first advice I will offer you today is probably you have to focus on one and build one to a success. And then uh, later you can uh, look at other uh, uh, businesses. Okay, so you look at it, where your energy is and focus. Okay, and then because uh, many of the things that you are doing actually would, doesn't require any uh, money to to do it, right? What you need now is to build on your social capital. You know, the, uh, me if you give me one million dollar today, and you you give me social capital, like I've met Sarah, right? Uh, I value the relationship between me and Sarah more than giving me one million dollar today, because tomorrow Sarah could link, link me to a job that I will least expect it, right? So in your in your line of business, right? What I, I will encourage you to look at it. You build your social capital now, right? And then you use your social capital to establish your business lens, and that will automatically bring the kind of businesses that you want to do. But in, in later we, we can talk and if I have, uh, uh, I have other information I can share with you uh, on that regard, right? But I think is okay. the right thing you are doing, yeah, it's the right thing you are doing. So you yeah, Mister Dibba, no, no, please. I have I have another um something that is is going on in my mind. Um, um I just finished my master's degree and. Uh, um, Currently, the family is also not doing well, so I have the pressure of going into uh, trying to get a, a job, and then before I continue my education to the PhD, and then uh, my academic advisor also told me to go into do my PhD. So I'm I'm in I'm in a fix now. If you could also throw in an advice for me. Oh, that one, I think I and think you know for the PhD in Ghana. Yeah, yeah, I think I advise if you have the ability to do a PhD and you have masters. I will encourage you to go for the PhD. You see, when I was doing my PhD, uh, I started my PhD in 2004, right? Along the same time, I have started my business. So I was combining the PhD uh, with my my business. So when it came for me to travel abroad, I have to leave the business in the care of my partner. Okay. So by the time I had finished my PhD, even though the business had not grown. It was still at the small scale business, but it still it was still a business. So I came to pick it up and now growing it. So if you have the ability to do a PhD, then I would advise that you go for a PhD. You you start looking at your, uh, finishing your PhD, and then uh, when you finish, the whole world is open to you, right? And with that entrepreneurial mindset. I'm very confident that uh, you you make it. I think somewhere. Yeah. So you know, the PhD opportunity, uh, I encourage you to go for. Sarah. Okay. Thank you very much for your question. Um, and then we have a third question from Ephraim. Can you hear me? I turn on your microphone. Hello. Hello, Sarah. Ah, hello. Yeah. Um, I'm Ephraim Sitianan, and I work for CSI Aswa Research Institute in Kumasi. But I'm okay. currently pursuing a PhD in Bonn, Germany. Okay. And uh, Dr. Ousmane, thank you so much for your presentation. I think it's very instructive. Okay. But um, I have two questions. Okay. And, uh, being already an employee, I'm wondering how I could manage conflict of interest in my effort to um, combine several income streams. So how are you going about it? Because you're already a lecturer and you are doing all these uh, businesses. So how do you manage conflict, conflict of interest? Because obviously you have your working hours. So yeah, how do you go about it? And the second one is um, as a starter or a fresh graduate, which of the income streams you have uh, presented uh, will you recommend? 
Uh, <laughs> but this question, if <laughs> let me to ask the first step. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. If I, first, the first question: managing the the conflict of interest mm -hmm. or managing my time. Mm -hmm. right. As a lecturer, uh, I think it's a, being a teacher or a lecturer uh, is one of the best quadrants one can be and operate in other disciplines without any problem. Other areas, for instance, like if you are working for CSR, it's also easy there because it's a, it's a research institution and you are a professional. So you can operate in the E and the, and the S. For instance, you can be a researcher and you can write books from the, from the S. Or you can be a resource person or a trainer or uh, do some consulting, other consulting activity, okay, uh, with your extra time. Sometimes you can use the weekends. Sometimes you can even use nights. You see, when uh, even at the year, right, mm -hmm. you can even serve as an internal consultant within your own organization, right? For for instance, I'm at Ken University. And uh, now I'm kind of an internal consultant to the Institute of Distance Learning when it comes to curriculum development, right? Many of their master's programs they are running are developed by my, my team, right? And it's internal. So uh, 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 any multiple uh, 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 income depends upon how the individual will utilize his time. Okay, so if you, uh, and even in the night, I mean sometimes you need to also look at in the night how many hours you you sleep, okay, and how many hours you can allot to doing certain things that can bring you in, uh, income. And you are, you are talking about fresh graduates also. Which of the quadrant you want to operate? Certainly, the the I quadrant is the last thing anybody should think of. Because that's where the big business, the big things, the big investments are done. And as a fair graduate, you don't have that muscle to operate there. Right. For the E, many fresh graduates will want to go there because they think that they can find a job. Even now, the unemployment rate suggests that it will take you a long time to even secure a job somewhere. So as a fresh graduate, to me you can operate in either in B or E or S, depending upon the individual interest. When I finished my first degree at that time in 2003, I set up Top Technical Class Ghana Limited at the B. I had a first class, I had that, but uh, I decided to set up my own business. That is the drive I had. I only had first degree, I didn't have money. I didn't, and uh, if I tell you, a bit about my background, where I'm coming from, you will see that I struggled through my education, paying my own fees to that level. And so I didn't have money. So I, I said I want to start my, my, my own business. Do you understand? And I, I registered that consultancy company. We didn't take any money. We, we didn't require any money. Okay, so you can decide by yourself that you want to start with a B. And now you look for how to do it. How to do it is what many people don't know, which you need, and these things are not taught in school. You need to get uh, additional knowledge by attending seminars to be able to uh, master yourself with the knowledge to, to, to start the, the B. Right. So uh, uh, I hope my, uh, you are okay with. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks for the yeah. response. And now to. Um, Samuel, um, if I heard him correctly, uh, he is involved in a youth organization, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, if yeah, I think uh, he could uh, get my email address from the uh, Accra and contact me because a colleague of mine yeah advertised uh, the UN funding opportunity. So if I think if he contacts me, then I'll know the detail of what he's doing it. I see how I can also link him up with uh, my colleague. Uh, so th that that is social capital. 
<laughs> through yeah. through this platform, you see how we have met, and mm -hmm. you are offering him an opportunity. You see that is this how it, 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 it works, right? Mm. So the basis is that you need to build your social capital. Uh, uh, life is not not all about the the initial money. It's about the social capital you 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 have, right? That was. <laughs> connect you to opportunities you will never think of. Like this platform alone uh, is getting uh, somewhere, some of opportunity. Uh, and thank, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're um, welcome. Okay, so there's uh, one short question which was typed in by Charles and he's asking you, Dr. Degraff, for um, the author of the cash flow quadrant. So, um, yeah, if you could provide the name, maybe. Okay. Robert Kiyosaki. Robert Kiyosaki. Okay. Robert Kiyosaki. Okay. Thank you very much. So, um, I guess there is one more question by Baba, is that right? Come again? Yeah. Yes, can you spell the name of the author? Yeah, Robert? I'm just uh, Kiyosaki. Can you uh, spell Robert it, R the last name? K-I-Y-O-S-A-K-I. -S -S a I Y A S A K I. Uh, uh, look at the chat. Uh, I'm chatting with you, so you can look at the the chat column. Yeah. Robert Kiyosaki. Okay. K I Y O S A K I. Within the webinar tool, okay. there's a there's a chat, and uh, he has just typed in the name. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, welcome. But quick one to Sarah. Sarah does, for instance, KAD also provide some seed capital for for people who want to go into business or anything? Oh, no, we are not providing uh, seed capital or anything. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and just by the way, thank you. Uh, you know, that, that is for scholarships. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> but thank you very much for the questions. <laughs> okay, I think if there are not um, any more questions, um, I would like to thank you very much again, Dr. Dikraf. Um And before I close this webinar, I would like to give the word to my colleague Felix Barnes. He want to do a very short survey with all our participants. It's just three or four questions, so very short. Are you here, Felix? Yes, I'm here. Um, if you can just answer this question shortly for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much. Um, I think most of us are alumni, about 80%. Um, the next question is, um, are you part of an alumni club? Uh, that's something we need to cultivate and hopefully we have a lot more alumni clubs going. You know, DAD sponsors um, people coming together to form alumni clubs. So if you are not part of it, you can think of forming one. And yeah, about 60% of us are. Okay, um, the next question is um, where are you participating from? Uh, whether in Ghana or within Africa or outside of Africa. Oh, interesting. We have some outside of Africa, about 20% of us outside of Africa. And thank you so much. The last question. Uh, would you like to moderate um, an alumni uh, meeting like this? In fact, we, we want you to bring suggestions and uh, send in to the email address program officer at dl-ghana.org if you have um, suggestions. And yeah, 50% say yes, 50% say maybe. So 
you are looking forward that from next year, um, January, we have a lot more of these meetings, a lot more of these interactions to help us. Thank you so much for responding to the question. Okay, thank, thank you, Felix, and everyone. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for participating in this webinar. A very big thank you uh, goes to Dr. DeCraft. Um, it's it was very nice to have you as our research person for today's webinar. It was a very valuable and interesting presentation. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> And uh, also thank you to all um, the participants. Thank you for the valuable discussion, for all your questions. And um, yeah, I hope you will join um, further webinars. And um, thank you very much again. All right, thank you. And nice meeting you. Bye. 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 Bye.